What's going on, people? I want to talk about this article that I came across. And this is an article that dates back to uh, April 1st of 2021. And the title of this article is South African Pastor Christ Penelope Farts on Congregates Claiming That It's a Process to Healing People. Now, I want you to listen to this article, and then I'm going to speak briefly on this. Uh, but before I speak on this, I want to, you know, give a big shout out to the people that um, supported this uh, podcast. You know, people donated to uh, the podcast by way of Cash App or Venmo. I want to give a big shout out to those people, but I want to give an extra big shout out to the brother. You know who you are that donated 200 bucks. It was quite surprising. I woke up and I had a cash app notification and I'm like, was kind of shocked, man, that somebody would, you know, and his message was, thank you for your bit videos. So I just want that brother to know, you know who you are. I really appreciate that. And I thank you for that. Now, I want you guys to listen to this article and then I'm going to speak on it quite briefly. A South African pastor reportedly farts on people's faces as a healing process to cure all spiritual and physical problems. Pastor Christ Penelope of Sevenfold Holy Spirit Ministries in Siandani Village, Limpopo, South Africa has created a buzz online for his unorthodox method of healing people after a photo of him sitting on the heads of people, apparently farting on them, went viral. An attendee visiting the church complained, when we come to church it's because we need prayers, not to be farted on. However, Pastor Penelope has defended his methods, insisting that he is simply demonstrating the power of God. It started with Master Jesus when he stepped on Peter. It is the demonstration of God's power. Just like God made Adam go into a deep sleep, it is a similar thing. God did anything with the body of Adam while he was on the ground in deep sleep. He was not feeling anything. The Bible doesn't say anything about Adam saying, God, you are hurting me, the pastor told South African magazine Drum. According to the pastor, farting near the person's nostrils is important so that the healing power can enter the body to do its work. He said, when they wake up from the deep sleep, they will tell you that they didn't feel anything. It is showing the power of God and those who needed healing are healed afterwards and others get to manifest at that moment. Remember when people try to tarnish your image, that is when he shows his glory. As long as souls are won into the kingdom, he who sits on the throne laughs at his enemies. Surprisingly, many people wait up to two months to meet him to get farted on. Some even collect his farts in containers. However, all pastors do not agree with Pastor Penelope's method of healing. Pastor Jacob Sabir from Gargesu told South African newspaper Daily Sun, This is wrong. Nowhere does God say sit on people and they will be healed. Pastors should practice what's in the Bible, not what they think isn't there. Bishop Miso Mabunda from Meadowlands agreed, saying, These are exactly the deeds the Bible warned us against. It said that at the end of the world, there'd be people who do things that will shock us. My advice will be for people to make their ways right with the Lord for the end is near. Pastor Penelope reacted to criticism and said, I don't fart on people, I heal people. Now, this was a quite interesting article. I think it, some, some part of me wants to think that it's a spoof. I'm not sure. Um, but it's... It's not really that surprising in the times that we're living in today because we see so many crazy things that's taking place in this world. And the sad thing about this is that there are people that will follow this person. They don't know God. They don't know the word of God. They have not been in a church that would actually sit down and teach them what thus saith the Lord but they follow after every wind of doctrine that come their way. And they call that spirituality. And what people fail to realize that you may say that you're spiritual or you believe in spirituality, but spirituality is like the universe. It's very vast. 
There is so much that's out there that calls itself spiritual. The demonic realm is spiritual. So you have people that's into demonology, people that call themselves Satanists. They also refer to themselves in many cases as spiritual. But I want to read to the Bible scripture taken from 1 John, the fourth chapter, reading the first to the fifth verse. And it reads as follows. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God, Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children. And have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The sixth and uh, the fifth and final verse says, They are not of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Like I said, there's people that's gonna follow after that. And you know what? I've always been quite suspicious of the Africans that come to America and claim that they are Christians. In this article, if it is real, I look at this as them making mockery of Christianity. They're making mockery of the Most High. They're making mockery of the Holy Spirit. Because according to that article, this man was saying that he farts on people. His fart is the Holy Spirit. To heal people. That's blasphemy. That's straight from the regions of hell. And again, because you know not the scriptures, nor the power thereof, there are many people that error, even people that were in the church. There are so many people that leave the church. They talk to some of these uh, uh, spirits out there that, that convinced them that what they were taught to believe is not real. And these people go a whoring after other gods. And then they find themselves in a mess that they can't get themselves out of. And over time, I've seen many people run back to the church trying to get themselves right. But by that time, they are so far gone that there's no coming back because their mind had been seared as with a hot iron. Now, I also want to give a, a last and final scripture taken from the book of Matthew, the 21st chapter, reading the 12th and the 13th verse. And this is talking about how the Most High, or better yet, Yeshua or Jesus, went into the temple. And the scribes and Pharisees had tables set up and money changes, and they were um, selling things in the temple. And this set Christ off and he tipped over the tables. But I'm going to read the scripture to you. It says, and Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer. But ye have made it a den of thieves. Now, I want to speak on that, um, selling in the temple. I was talking to a young lady that had a bad experience with the church. And she claims that her mom was a faithful member, that she sold things in the church. She helped the church raise money. And then when the mother passed, the church refused to bury her because the church says that it was for members only. Now, 
I really don't believe that. It's hard for me to believe that. Because the way most churches work is, yes, members, yes, if a member passes, yes, the church will bury them. But then there are times that there's people that's outside of the church come to the church to want to bury their loved ones because maybe their loved one visited that church or was a church goer. They might have paid tithe. They might have paid um, offering. They might have given something to the church. But they never not only joined the church, but they never gave their life to the Lord. Because there's people out there that think that they can buy the Most High. They can buy the preacher. They think that they can buy their way into the kingdom of God, and that's wrong. They think because they pay tithe and offering, the church owes them. And if they, for example, this man in his church had a business. He paid his tithe. One day, one of his church trucks broke down. One of his business trucks broke down. So he came to the pastor and wanted, to, wanted help from the pastor uh, and was saying that, you know, can the church pay for his truck to get fixed? And the pastor explained to him that's not what the tithe are for, you know, because this man brought up that he pay his tithe faithfully. But the preacher was like, that's not what the tithe are for. So this man was was angry. And now he had something bad to say about the church because he could not seem to understand why. The church would not help to pay to get his truck fixed for his business, being that he paid tithe. So you have people that are church goers. They may pay their tithe. They may pay an offering. And then when they die, the church have no record of them. They're not on that church roll. They're not members. They've never been a member. But people in their family was convinced they were members because they always attended that particular church. And then when that person passes away, then the family member want the church to bury them. And then the pastor goes over uh, the church row and like, well, we don't know this person. You know, unless it's a small church and they all know each other, it's like, we don't know this person. Well, she's been coming there all her life. Uh, she helped to raise money. She was very uh, committed and dedicated to the church, but her name is not on the church roll. See, there's a difference between being a member of a church and a church goer. The church is not for the world. The Bible says come out from among the world and be separate. The church is for the people of Yah. Now, the church may do things for the community. They may have community activities to try to bring people into the fold. But when it comes to that church, the church is for the body of believers. The church is the body of believers. It's not that building. It's the body of believers that's in that building. So people got it confused because they think that the church is supposed to serve the communities. And that's not necessarily true. The church is not to serve the community. Now, the church may try to help the community or try to bring people in to the, to the fold. But the church is for the body of believers. The church is the body of believers. And it's not for the world. See, if you guys want social services, or public assistance, then that's what you have the government for. That's what you pay your taxes for. You pay your taxes, so if you run into hard times, then you should be able to go to your government for help until you get back on your feet. You don't make that a lifestyle. You don't make welfare or public assistance a lifestyle. That's just until you're able to get back on your feet and get back into the workforce. But I think a lot of people got it mixed up, and I was going to do a separate video on that. But a lot of people got it mixed up, man. They think the church is supposed to serve the community. No, the church serves God. Now, the church will help the community. 
For example, Catholic Charities. The reason why Catholic Charities is able to give so much to the communities is because they don't mind donating money to the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church got up bins where you can donate clothing. I'm talking about brand new clothes. People donate house homes. Uh, they do donate money. They donate food, right? They don't just give, pull stuff off their back or pull stuff out of the closet that they don't want no more and just give it to the Catholic Church and then give it to you. No, I know people that uh, the Catholic Church has really helped out, put them in a home, paid their rent. If they needed transportation, they got them bus tokens or a bus pass or even sometimes a vehicle. The Catholic Church got them uh, laptops. and But look how corrupt the Catholic Church is. And how many of those people actually joined the church after the church, the Catholic Church helped them out? Not too many. See, so the church is not for the benefit of the community. The church came out of the world. The church is sanctified. The church is holy, supposedly. Now, there are many false prophets and false Christ has gone into the world. A lot of false teachers and preachers that say that they are of Christ. And they're deceiving many, just like this guy that's in the article. So don't be deceived. Don't be deceived at all. And, and people don't like when you talk against uh, their, their, their spirituality. You know, you tell them that, look, that's of the devil. That's not of God. And they take offense to that. But those same people later on down the line will find out that they're in a bunch of mess, and then they want to fault the church. They want to talk about how false the church is when people tried to warn them of the mess that they were getting themselves into. They became offended. And they didn't want to hear anything that the people of y'all had to tell them. So don't be deceived. There's a lot of false teachings out there, man. And they come under the title of spirituality. That is so vast and broad, man. Anything is is comprised in there. When you when you open when you open a can of spirituality, man, you got roaches and rats and and slugs and and mosquitoes and bees and and uh, stink bugs and all kind of mess in there. Feces, vomit. That's in the spirit world. That's spirituality that a lot of people talk about. That's what they claim to believe while they curse the Bible. They curse the church. They curse the most high. They call it the white man's God. And the white man has nothing to do with the creator. And if that's the white man's God, then the white man is violating his own God. Because look at the mess that the so-called white man is doing in this world. Look at the havoc that he's wrecking in this world. So I'm going to end it right there, but be careful, y'all. There's a lot of mess out there, and I really don't care too much for these, these Africans that's coming here uh, under the title of Christianity because, especially the Nigerians, there's a lot of scamming going on among them, you know? And black Americans are their prey because you have black Americans that want to be African so bad that they will gobble up everything that they give them. So they come with a false sense of Christianity or misinterpreting the Bible and would have you stand there while they urinate on you or defecate on you and tell you that it's holy, that it's anointed. They vomit on you and tell you it's anointed, it's holy, it's of God, and you foolishly believe them. Just like this article where this man is sitting on grown men's face and farting on their face. Again, whether this article is true or not, I don't know. But you have people in this day and time that will fall for that nonsense. So feedback, tell me what you think. Until next time. I'm fearless.